Welcome to the TCU Innovates Podcast. For over 150 years, Texas Christian University has been at the forefront of innovation, and we're just getting started. I'm TCU Chancellor Victor Bashini, And I'm TCU President Daniel Pullen. We are your hosts of TCU Innovates. We highlight the latest stories of innovation and thought leadership across our community. Dream big, be bold, and lead on, Horn Frogs. Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in. This is Victor, again, Victor Bashini, in case you know tons of Victors. <laughs> I'm here today with Dr. Vanessa Roberts Bryan, one of my favorite TCU people. She's the Assistant Vice Chancellor for Leadership and Student Involvement. And Vanessa, first of all, thanks for being on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here today. Oh, we're glad to have you. And you're always excited. That's why I love you. <laughs> first, tell me how you first came to TCU. So I thought about this, and when I was in the eighth grade, I came to cheer camp at TCU. Ah, oh, wait, uh, you were in cheer camp is no surprise Yes, to me. yes, I was a cheerleader. Um, I danced since I was four, and I've been a cheerleader since the seventh grade. And we came to TCU back in the day. Uh, so I started my Horn Frog journey when I was in the eighth grade as a cheerleader at um, the Universal Cheer Association cheer camp. But then I officially joined uh, the TCU community in 2016. Um, so I was working as a uh, dean of students and dean of student affairs within um, at a small private university in Abilene, and I was ready for my next step, and I found my way to TCU. Oh, we're so glad you did, too. <laughs> Start by explaining to, to our listeners, you, okay, you're called the Assistant Vice Chancellor for Leadership and Student Involvement. What do you do? That's a great question, <laughs> right? Uh, so I am an assistant vice chancellor for student affairs. So I work within the division of student affairs. And my unit is leadership, student involvement, and student identity and engagement. And what that means is I get to work with an amazingly talented team of professionals that oversee and implement the involvement experience for all of our students here at TCU. So starting with the first First year experience, new student and family programs, welcoming all of our first year students into their TCU experience, ensuring that that transition is a strong, positive transition, and then um, getting them acclimated with the TCU experience and welcoming them and helping them to understand what in leadership, involvement, service, and their identity is on a college campus, particularly here at TCU. So all of those functional areas um, reside within my team, and we get to really walk alongside students' journey as they learn about leadership and learn about what kind of leader they want to be, how they can serve and impact the TCU community and the Fort Worth community, and then really giving them opportunities to explore their identity, who they are, um, how that identity fits into the world around them, and who they want to become. And we help them lean into that and develop that. Oh, wow. That's an amazing gift you get to see yes, that Yes, yeah. Day, right? I see it as a true gift and yeah. an honor to get to work with a team that works with students in these pivotal moments of their entire life. That's why I went into the field of student affairs was because for me as a student, I, one, had a really challenging first year experience and I was homesick and I was lonely. Uh. And the thing that kept me um, at my university, the thing that um, helped me find my fit and find my home was my involvement, um, my involvement in student organizations, my involvement with, for me, it was my spiritual experience in my church community. It transformed me as a first year student and helped me to find my fit and to understand my why at the university. And then all of the rest of my experiences at the university helped me I become who I am and to understand what my personal identity was and the role that I play through that identity and through my passion in making a difference in the world. And I realized that that is what I wanted to do, was to work with students to be able to cultivate uh, their experience and help them understand who they are um, and then go change the world. And to be able to do that 
Um, and to see them really go out and make this huge impact and huge difference in the world uh, is the most rewarding thing ever. And it's such a special gift. Oh, wow, I love yeah. that. So are you frog camp? Are you orientation? All those areas under you? Yes, yeah. yes. So everything within new student and family programs. So that begins with um, welcoming students. We work very closely with the admission team to start that really early on and to help them to understand, to help the new students and their families understand what it's going to be like to be a horn frog. Right. And so then that translates into orientation, um, which is their academic welcome, their academic integration into the community, um, sprinkled in with a little bit of social uh, aspects. And then frog camp is the, the primary uh, social welcome to our community. Um, that kind of social piece within TCU, within Fort Worth, within Texas, and then within the world. Um, so Frog Camp uh, partners our upper division students with a faculty staff member to journey alongside our first year students um, in exploring things related to the transition. So what are their fears? What are they excited about? And then also things related to their identity and their culture. Uh, who are they and what are they bringing to TCU? And then learn learning about their peers and what they are bringing to TCU, and then really giving them opportunities to talk about how we live in community. Um, we are different, but we also um, have a lot of similarities. And how do those differences um, make or enrich the experience? And how do we embrace those differences and create a culture of connection and a culture of belonging? And then that kind of translates into Frogs First, which is our week of welcome. And uh, that is the few days of the week before school begins. It's just another opportunity for us to welcome the first year students and also give them additional points of contact that are both upper division students and faculty and staff through a variety of different programs. Um, you know, one of our favorite is the frog family dinner um, that we have where we just sit across the table with faculty staff first year students upper division students and we break bread together and we just start to build community in beautiful ways well, so for, for instance, if I want to go on a frog camp as a faculty staff mentor, are you the person I should suck up to? Uh, me and a team of other <laughs> individuals. So there's four of us or four um, staff members on the new student and family programs team. And uh, the primary individuals responsible for frog camp, they are uh, kind of like the magic behind orientation and frog camp. And then I assist. Um, I'm kind of like the cheerleader right, for them. Right. Yes, yes. So so um, one of the really cool things we're doing this summer uh, is, you know, we always have the mystery camp where nobody knows right. where we're going. Um, and then we're going back to Nashville. Uh, we are going back to Colorado for our two Alpine camps. And then our international camp this summer is Iceland. Oh. So that'll be really exciting. Uh, so um, we are super excited about welcoming um, some of our faculty and staff to attend that. Uh, but then there are also um, 10 other uh, Texas camps. So we have Casa Nueva, which is welcome to your new home in Fort Worth. We have All Stars, which is welcome to your new home in Fort Worth and get to know a little bit about the amazing culture of um, kind of competition and athleticism that we have. Um, they go to a Rangers game, tour the Cowboys Stadium, learn a little bit about uh, how to support TCU athletics. And then if we do have athletes with us, we connect with them as well. Uh, so that's all stars. And then we have our challenge camp, which is our um, most traditional campiest camp, you know, that the, where they go to a campground, um, kind of like a church camp sort of, or a leadership camp. They stay in bunk beds and, you know, they do fun things um, here. So there are so many opportunities for faculty and staff to be a part of Frog Camp. It, they can stay here in Fort Worth and stay in hotels. They can stay in the state of Texas, but stay in like, you know, a camp environment or they can travel beyond um, and stay, you know, any go on one of our in domestic camps or then attend one of our international. So my wife and I do a frog camp every year or we try. Yeah. And uh, I had never done the challenge one, mm -hmm. the one in the camps. Mm -hmm. And so we got there the first day and I'm like, uh, where's my hotel? Yeah. <laughs> What's going on and with this? And they're like, it's over there. Uh, in the bunk, you know? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. oh, I didn't know uh, I okay. signed up for this. Yeah. yeah. It's like but it an 18 out, again, right? But it turned out to be great as yeah. they all do. Yes. Yes. Each one has its own unique 
atmosphere and it really becomes its own unique identity. And each of those um, really create this atmosphere of belonging in different ways. Mm -hmm. So students, um, especially some of those ones that are the ones uh, like the Challenge or Alpine, when you go to Colorado, um, there you just don't have the amenities that you normally have. Sometimes your cell phone doesn't work. Right. Um, you are in bunk beds. Sometimes the water might be hot when you're, or cold when you're we taking had a mice shower. In our cabin. There's a mouse, you know, <laughs> that you make friends with, like in Cinderella. You know, ooh, it's so fun. Um, so that allows the students. Um, the opportunity to connect over something um, like a common experience. And right. so that common experience could be the mouse, right? <laughs> the common experience could be, um, you know, rock climbing. It could be being on a bus going somewhere, um, sharing the Rangers game experience. One of my very favorite TCU memories that I tell all the time. We've had some candidates on campus recently, and they asked me, like, what is one of your most favorite TCU memories? And it's with you on a frog camp. We went to frog camp New Orleans two years ago. That was fun. We took a late night ghost tour yeah, around the great. French Quarter, which was kind of creepy and interesting. And then, you know, the 28 students and the four faculty staff members got back on the bus. It was late at night. The lights were, you know, it was real dark, but they turned the little, like, um, the party lights almost on in the bus. And the students put on sweet Caroline. And we were all singing that song. Um, and I looked across and there was Chancellor Boschini, um, one of the deans of our colleges, and 24 first year students bebopping along to Sweet Caroline. And um, it, those are the moments when I actually like paused in that moment and started to cry, which is for my staff is not uncommon. They know, <laughs> right? Like Philip Dodd was behind me on the bus and he was like, Here she goes. Vanessa, what's going on? And I was like, uh, and he's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, here she goes. Um, but it was one of those moments where I just sit back. It's kind of surreal. Like you are almost in a dream and you watch. This is why we do the work that we do. The chancellor of our university, a dean of one of our schools, and first year students that are like 18 from all across the world are sitting in a bus singing a song together because we are dedicated to welcoming them and creating an opening, welcoming environment helping them to understand that they truly belong here. And that's what we do for fro with Frog Camp. That's what all of our work does, you know, when we're doing service projects or we're doing leadership or we're putting the tree lighting. Those are all experiences intentionally created to develop a sense of belonging for our students, our students of all um, of all walks of life. And so we try to meet them where we are and um, welcome them in. If they don't see themselves here in our community, then we help to try to create experiences where they can see themselves or they find themselves. We empower them to create those experiences on their own. And that's what I love about the work that we do. I know one thing that you're really um, proud of, because I am too, I think we all are, is that we have a 94% retention mm -hmm. rate for our new students, which is many, many multiples higher than the national average. Yes. Why do you think that happens? Um, <clears throat> one of my colleagues, uh, Reese Hardy, calls TCU... Um, Wednesday Jams love <laughs> Yes, does yes, that, yeah. yeah. He calls TCU the caring university. And I think that so much of... That 94% retention rate comes from the care that we invest in creating an environment where students feel seen, valued, heard, and that they belong. Uh, so a lot of it happens with like admission and the first year uh, new student stuff with the orientation and frog camp and frogs first. But I you know, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about our residential experience. Um, we create an extraordinary experience for students to be home. We really invest in those residential or our residence halls and our staff to create um, these environments where they connect with students, they know students, um, they care about students, and they provide opportunities for them to get involved and connected to other resources. Um, the thing that we do within my team is <clears throat> the transition experience happens, and then the entire first-year experience 
occurs throughout that, that first academic year. We have first-year leadership organizations that are opportunities for first-year students to learn about leadership, the kind of leader that they want to be, and then how they are positioned within the TCU community to make that difference. We work alongside very closely our faculty um, colleagues in UNLF, which is University Life, the first year um, kind of like belonging and welcome to college course. And so we help to train those peer leaders and peer guides to serve faculty members and first year students in that experience. And so the whole first year, the whole entire first year of a student's um, college experience is intentionally created by staff members and faculty members that care greatly about our students and also understand the developmental levels of our students and what development they are they are going through. Um, so we know that coming in when they first get on campus, they are going to need um, to understand, uh, they're going to need to develop competence around their environment, around interpersonal communication and skills, and then their academic world. And so we create experiences um, and trainings and workshops to help support students in all of those areas that we know from a developmental lens they are going to need to learn, to engage, and to support. Um, the, the teams within the Division of Student Affairs provide peer-to-peer -peer tutoring um, so that when students are struggling in their first year and beyond, um, and maybe not even struggling, they just need some reinforcement, you know. Um, I know like when you study, for me, when I study math, the more that I do it, the more I know it. You know, it sinks in. Practice makes perfect. And so we have those opportunities for peer-to-peer -peer tutoring, for success coaching. Um, the division is just the division of student affairs just in, provides these intentional experiences to support students. Um, and then we do that also beyond the work of the division um, with our faculty and staff, like with Frog Camp or with Frogs First. And so earlier this week, I was just talking to staff assembly about getting involved in Frog Camp. And the way that I explained it, you know, during orientation, they're going to meet their faculty members they're going to have points of contact with upper division students, and that helps to begin to build this net of support. With Frog Camp, they're going to meet a, some more upper division students. They're going to connect with additional faculty or staff members. It strengthens the network of support. At Frogs First, when they sit around the table with a librarian or an IT person or perhaps even somebody from maintenance or grounds, it begins to strengthen the network of support so that when a student is struggling and it may be November or December or, you know, in the spring, or they have a question, they might remember like, hey, I remember I had lunch with the librarian and I bet I could email her and ask her something about the library. Or I met Vanessa. I don't know what she does, but she told me, because I always say this to first year students, if you have any question right. and you Contact don't know where me. to go, you come to me. I may not know the answer, but I will point you in the direction. We are here to be those kind of like navigators for our students. And so I will have students email me. Um, and that's one of the things just I love about our job. Um, so they come by our office for Tide pins to get a little thing out. They want, you oh, know. Oh, I love Tide pins. Yes, right? Like, and um, so they want chocolate. They want a mint. They want coffee. They want to sit on the couch and just take a breath. And sometimes they want to cry because they're homesick. And all of those <clears throat> opportunities for them to connect and build that social network gives them another person that they can do that with. They can you, pop in their office and say, I need you. You've said many times over about connection, mm -hmm, connecting, mm -hmm. connect. I think that's a hallmark of TCU, the whole connection yes. culture. Mm -hmm. Because basically what you're saying is at every level, people are connected mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. Yes, I 100% wholeheartedly agree. From um, <clears throat> like our staff, with our faculty, with our students, <clears throat> excuse me, we want everybody to feel connected and to be a part of and to know that they are a part of something uh, bigger than themselves and they are a part of something not only is it bigger than themselves but it is something spectacular it is special to be a part of TCU and you know you asked me like what brought you here to TCU um, I was ready I was in job searches you know I had finished my doctorate was looking for the next step 
but it had to be the right next step for me. And I stepped foot on campus and I knew you can feel that culture of community, the culture of connection, and the culture of care. Um, there were other other uh, searches that I withdrew from because I didn't feel that. And I knew that I wouldn't be happy in that environment. And so connection is really important to me. And I, um, to be successful as a staff member, to, as an employee, as a student, you have to find your connection. And it looks different for every person. Um, it, so I always tell students, you know, it's not one size fits all. We're going to show you student organizations to get involved in. We have over 300, but you may not find your connection there. You, we're going to show you academic opportunities, but you may not find your connection there. It could be with your sweet mate that you meet your first year that is completely different and opposite than you, but you connect and you take that person and that relationship with you all four years and they're in your wedding and they make an impact. That's all that matters is that you found your connection. With my staff, I really encourage them to get involved in um, opportunities with our students, but with one another. Okay, let's let's let the listeners learn a little bit about you. Um, Ooh, okay. okay, let's do it. Are you coffee, tea, water, or soda? Ooh, coffee. Coffee. Oh, yes. I'm surprised because caffeine's probably the last thing. I you know, need. I know, but it's <laughs> de- like given those, it's coffee and then water. Right. Yeah. I know also that your family's really important to you. Very uh, important. And I know you have these kids. Tell us about oh, your children. Oh yes. Yeah. Ah! my little guys. Um, I have two four and a half year old twin boys, uh, Everett and Bennett. Um, They are uh, like, if you get to know them, they one is me and one is my husband. Um, They are hilarious. Ah. Um, They're super adventurous. They uh, are very talkative. At Bennett will never meet a stranger, and he will talk your ear off. So is he the one from like the beginning? You? Yes. Yeah. Um, Everett will be shy until he gets to know you, and then he's pretty talkative uh-huh. too. So they both have the talkative element. It's just one; it takes a little bit longer to get to, which is very similar to Kyle, my husband. So um, they have very big emotions. Both of them do, which wouldn't be a surprise coming from me. You know, I come from a large Italian family, and <laughs> <laughs> we are full of energy and emotion. Drama. Drama, Drama. all the way. Um, so, yes, uh, we always say that, especially Bennett. Bennett is so much more like me, um, but he is drama, drama, drama. Um, but Everett can give you the drama, too, because he can... He gives it to you with his facial expressions, like, oh, like no other. So um, they are, uh, they love TCU. And my husband works at TCU. He works in IT and I work in student affairs. So his office is over down in the Pond Data Center. And my office is in the blue, you know, the University Union. So the just even the dynamic of those buildings is completely different. And the boys pick up on that. So they call my area Mama's TCU. TCU and they call Kyle's area daddy's TCU. Uh-huh. Bennett just said that this morning um, when I said like, where am I going? And he's like, you're going to mama's TCU. Uh-huh. Yeah. So um, we like, like all TCU is mama's yes, TCU. Yes. Yeah. Buddy. Yeah. Let's correct <laughs> yeah. that, buddy. But um, every time they come, you know, we do, um, my team uh, does all of the really cool things. Like um, we work alongside housing and residence life to do TCU boo. Um, our team does uh, the tree lighting. And then a lot of the work of our students is um, from the crew, our student activities programming board, and they have inflatables all the time. So when the boys come up here, there's inflatables right. like, you know, nine times out of 10. So they're always like, okay, the what are we? Zoo. Wh- yes. Yes. The petting zoo, the inflatables, there's candy 100% of the time. And, um, they come, they've come with me a few times when I I've done um, some trainings for student leaders, and so they've come to Frog Camp with us. And um, Everett is too cool for school, and he finds the cool guys every time he comes on campus. And he stands with them, and, like, there's been times I've been like, okay, let's go, guys. And Everett just looks at me and goes, no, I'm staying here, Mom. And I'm like, first of all, Mom? No, it's Mama. And then, (laughs) two, I'm not leaving you with, like, you know, the 25-year-old cool guys. Like, not yet, buddy. Not yet. So... We've come for um, the Easter the Easter egg hunt, and they were fairly little. I think they were two or two and a half. So, yes, they are the light of my life. Um, they are part of the TCU community, and that's important to me. Um, I think that 
I love when I see our students light up and when they interact with my boys and then when my boys interact with the students. Um, I want my boys to know that when mommy is at work and mommy is spending time away from them, that the time that I am spending away from them is meaningful and important. And I think they see that, like they will be playing and I'm like, what are you doing? And they're like, oh, we're working with our college students. I'm sending an email to students. Um, and so I try to talk to them about the importance of the work that I do. And they know that the way that mommy supports them is the same way that mommy <laughs> supports um, the same way that mommy supports her students, right. you know, so when I am gone for four days for frog camp, these are students that are leaving their mommies and daddies and coming to TCU. And it's my job to, to welcome them and to make sure that they feel comfortable, just like you feel comfortable at home. This is their new home. And they know which ones are the residence halls. They're like, they live, the students live there. Uh, Isn't that cool? So I just, I love them being a part of the work that I do. Well, I think that's great you involve them too. And it's mm -hmm. good for them to see that. Yes. Like you say. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You're a person of many, many ideas. <laughs> yeah. Many big ideas. And this this whole podcast is about big ideas. Mm -hmm. So is there are there is there one or maybe a couple big ideas you would like to implement at TCU before you die? Yeah. Oh, before I die. Yeah. Okay, that's a long time. Hopefully I live a long time. Right. Um, one of um, something that happened within the last year is that uh, my team is fairly new in that we added, um, we came together with a bunch of different departments to make my unit. And so our unit has um, student activities and, kind, and student orgs. It has leadership and service, new student and family programs, and student identity and engagement in the university union team. And so when I think about all of those um, different kind of functional areas, my big dream or big goal is to bring them all together in like one epic student experience because they all, um, there are such talented staff in those, in those areas and departments. And so what I have really been working with my team on and challenging them to think about is how do we create a, an experiential learning leadership trip um, because travel really transforms yes. the student experience. So a travel experience that incorporates leadership, community engagement, and service with identity and social justice for first-year students. So it's a lot. I'm, I don't think it'll happen in like a year or two, right. um, but we are dreaming big. And I'm saying like, how do we create a transformational first year travel experience rooted in leadership, service and identity? Because that is every single area that I oversee right. and it incorporate. We would have upper division student leaders. We would be creating ethical leaders and responsible citizens in the global community that go and change the world. I love it if you did yeah. that for seniors. Yes, one, yeah. One yeah. thing I've always thought, I love frog camp, mm -hmm. but I'm like, we should do that again at the capstone of their mm -hmm. experience and mm -hmm. kind of see how they've changed because I think they would realize that too. Yes, we actually had just a couple of weeks ago, well, I guess like a month or two ago in January, um, CLP took the, uh, a leadership learning experiential trip to Vancouver and they did a lot of that reflection. It was a unique, you know, kind of a, um, a niche group, right? right? It wasn't just any senior. Uh, so, but it was our chancellor's leadership program and they went to Vancouver and they learned about the indigenous population there, about residential schools and the impact of that. And then they also had a lot of, at the senior year, you know, we do a lot of opportunities for them to reflect for them to reflect on, you know, where were you in your first year and your second year? What did you learn? Um, what kind of leader have you become and who, what kind of leader do you want to be? Um, I always tell my team, our work is to help students identify their passion and translate that into purpose. Um, we identify passion, they create their own leadership style, um, and then they identify ways for them to use that and translate into that into their purpose. So if they're going to be a, a lawyer or they're going to be in finance, we talk to them about 
what kind of lawyer do you want to be? What kind of doctor? Um, we instill empathy and compassion and social awareness that we are a leader. And with that comes significant responsibility to help those around us and to pave the way for those coming, you know, after us. And so I think doing that in the senior year is a perfect opportunity to do that. I would love to create it in the first year and then create other opportunities to connect it in the sophomore, junior, and senior year. So that in the senior year, they are almost um, developing an action plan, right? Like, this is who I am, this is where, where I'm going in the world, and this is how am I gonna do it, how? Like, let's talk about that, yeah. Oh my let's God. do it together, yes. Chancellor Boschini. We could do that. Okay. We could do that. Yeah, yes. Let's. We could call it the VB, like <laughs> yeah, Victor Boschini, or Vanessa, Vanessa Bryan. Yeah. yeah, it works. I never realized we have the same initials. We That's do. Right. Uh -huh. Very good. Yeah. What's your middle name? Uh, Robert. Oh, Robert. It's my right. maiden name. Yeah. Yes. So you you're know. VRB. VRB. Yeah, okay. What oh, is like, your middle name? That's like vacation rental right oh yeah, yeah. Verbo. Verbo. yeah i was like oh it's my you know that's my side hustle right. slash my um bowl game right yeah. the Verbo bowl right. game yeah that's your retirement plan yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna go to work for them well thank you so yeah, much yeah thank you for having okay. me dr vanessa bryant robert roberts bryant you are amazing i mean oh, that and thank you so much i think that you're a big reason why your programs are successful thank you would you. never admit this but it takes <laughs> leadership like you're saying <laughs> and you also get to be a mentor to the mentors yes if you think yes. about that mm -hmm. and i think that's really where you i think your biggest influence isn't on our students it's on the people, people. who influence our mm -hmm. students mm -hmm. and i think that's really your legacy yeah i would agree i oh, would agree good. my team is amazing and getting to um invest in them so that they can invest in the students is such a joy and they're at all different levels right like right. i have coordinators that are coming straight out of grad school that are you know 22 years old brand new professionals and then we have them up to you know directors executive directors that are seasoned professionals and being able to just pour into their development is really an amazing um a part of my job and sometimes um you know we forget about that so thank you for reminding me of the importance of that because it's, oh, it's a really great opportunity to you're do. great at that thank okay, you let's end on one thing okay and, but i think i know the answers but i want you to say it what do you think's more important attitude or aptitude attitude absolutely. attitude absolutely yeah. agree yes agree yes because if you think you can do something you can you can if you yeah. think you can't you won't you won't yeah mm -mm, that's so true yeah you got to believe in yourself um i always tell my students um, when I interviewed for my graduate program in student affairs back in the early 2000s, <laughs> um, they asked me, like, w if we interviewed one of your students 20 or 30 years down the road, what do you want them to say about you? And I said that um, I want them to say what I learned from Vanessa was um, that I have value, that I am loved, and that I can do amazing things, that I, Vanessa taught me how to love and how to have confidence in myself so that I can go change the world. Oh my and I would say that today, you know, yeah. 20 plus years later. Well, P.S., I love you. You are great. I love and you thank, too, Bebo. Thank Bebo. you so much. You have a great day. <laughs> you too. Thank you for this opportunity. And thanks everyone for listening, and we'll see you next yes. time. Go Frogs. Go Frogs! The TCU Innovates podcast is recorded at the KTCU studio in the Bob Schieffer College of Communication at Texas Christian University. Special thanks to our student producers, Jackson James and Carson Arnold, and the entire TCU team for supporting our show. Go Frogs!